Hi, welcome to the Parenting Bridge podcast. I'm Dr. Michelle Alden, a licensed professional counselor, parent coach, and family therapist. And I'm here to help you to build a bridge to your best family possible. Hi. (laughs) Some of the questions that we're going to go over today have to do with connection, how we build connection, kind of why connection can be really hard with some of our challenging kids, um, controlling and stopping impulsive behaviors. And um, some questions have come in about why we limit technology and how to, and sometimes it's the question is around how to bring it back in because in our program we limit it. And so, you know, why, why we do that and how to, how we recommend that you bring that back in, how to maneuver through tough problems um, and continue to hopefully get forward movement through some of the rough patches. And then um, there's a question about the three-foot rule, why why we do it, how we do it. And I'm going to tie that one in probably when we talk about connection as well. Let's just start off talking about connection and why it's so difficult sometimes with our challenging kids. So, you know, and this is a, it, a lot of times it has to do with attachment issues and some of the struggles with some of our kids that are adopted. But sometimes it has also to, you know, when your kid has a lot of challenging behaviors, it can be really, really difficult to feel connected. Um and they can, I, I've seen it both where kids can really push hard away with their behaviors or their words or the things they say, and then kind of back into like a lot of times after we've, we've worked through a problem, then they'll be really clingy. Um, and a lot of times you'll find that with connection, it, it tends, it's on their terms, you know, and especially kids with attachment issues are kind of controlling it. And they sometimes will almost be kind of controlling and, and how they're even in, in kind of coming into, to your space. So the three foot rule is kind of is a great place to start. It's about arm's length, and that's about the distance that in the program we have you keep the kids that close at least during the first very first part of the program. And that is because in those moments you can really you really have some opportunities to see what's going on. Um, a lot of the kids that I work with get very explosive. They have a lot of you know. Um, anger management issues to say in the least and it can feel like things just came out, happened out of the blue that one minute they're playing nicely with their sibling and the next minute they totally are fighting or lose it and if you're not right there you don't know what happened so we kind of start over with connection we have them be really close to you much like a, a younger child um, you're doing things together you're noticing the shifts in their mood and then that that can kind of lead to some other problems with connection one of them is that these kids tend to be very, some of them are incessant chatty chatty talkers and or asking a lot of questions and not really just, it's not really to stay connected. It's more, still has to do with kind of their insecurities and just kind of mind, it's almost like mindlessness. They're, they're talking over you, um, just, you know, telling random stories. So in that three foot time when you're doing those things, it's okay to put some boundaries around it. Um, sometimes you can say, you know, tell me, tell me one more thing that you wanted to tell me, um, or I can listen to you, you know, talk for one more minute and then it's time to stop, or we're going to do this, or you can say, we're going to do this activity quietly. We're not going to talk, but we're going to be together. So they have that assurance of being together. Um, you have one child that I work with that it's almost like if he's not talking, he feels like people have forgotten about him or not paying attention to him. And so he... He just tends to be always right there, like like saying things. So we've been using some visuals, just saying stop, listen, I want you to think, you know. But mostly just you know stop, listen, and then staying connected by being there can be really helpful because some kids, as soon as you tell them to stop doing something or you're redirecting them, they'll get really angry. But if you're right there, closer, it can really help to maintain that connection through that activity. And the three foot rule is really important for them to learn to not to stay in that, you know, not come in closer than that three feet when they're really upset or aggressive. Um, We want, you can go into their space if you need to help them, like if they're angry or aggressive, but they need to stay and not, not reach out and kick, hit, hurt. So, um, so keeping your kids apart too can be really important until you've worked through some of this. And then when you add in those interactions, you have control over in your kind of guiding how they interact and how they um, they play together. Um, we wanted some of the, some children, especially if they've had a lot of trauma in their childhood, you, you really need to teach them how to play. 
So playing with them and then don't be afraid to guide that activity. You can build a lot of connection just playing together. Very young children learn through playing and they connect through playing. So at first it may be very side side by side kind of play and or they may be lost in their world of imagination and you might find it very difficult to join in with that, but you can also guide it too. Like, hey, let's make these guys do this and and my guy says this to your guy and then what, you know, what is what is he going to say, you know, and so you can guide that play and that can really teach them how to connect and how to have interconnection in positive ways. Um, and if you have more than one child, um, there's a couple of different ways that we build that connection. You can do what we call as table time or box time, where you have toys in separate boxes and everyone's like sitting. I had one family with six kids and we all sat on the floor during box time. And about every 10 minutes we would rotate boxes. And the rule was, is that when the timer went off, everything went back in the box. So they couldn't save the things that they had made. They could show, you know, like, yeah, you know, show it. But then they had to like put it away and then pass the box to the next person. And it was, it was really good exercise, which kind of also leads into controlling and stopping impulsive behaviors because we had things set up on the timer and it was, they didn't have control over which box they got next. It was just, you know, going around in the circle and trading. One of the other things that really helps with that is is you as the parent making those decisions rather than giving them, you know, what what toy did you want to play with or what what thing did you want to do next or, you know, but don't don't be worried about making some of those choices and just helping them by by directing them. And that helps also with delayed gratification and impulse control because almost it, it doesn't seem to matter what box it is you choose. It may have been the box they wanted 10 minutes ago, but now that you're saying this is your box that you're going to play with for 10 minutes, they will, you know, want some other box, but they are going to get that one. They just have to wait, or they might not get that box today. They might get it the next day. So some of these things that you put into place where you're structuring that play and structuring that time can really help a lot. The way that that they're playing in their imagination. I don't like to interfere with it too much unless it's interactive. So like if a child is playing with toys and and you're there and they're getting too aggressive or you don't like the way they're talking, then you can say, let's, let's try it this way and give them another way to try it. But if you're on the outside and then you're, you're trying to dictate how, how they play or what they said, or I didn't like that, or that wasn't a, Hey, that, that wasn't a good way to play. You may need to get more involved in at least just you know, your presence just sitting next to them can, even if you're not, you don't have to interact and play with them necessarily, but you need to be there so that they can learn how to play and learn, you know, just that, learn through having that connection with you. So, and you'll, and it really helps too, because a lot of times you're trying to like color with kids or, or, you know, do an activity and they're, you have some kids that are constantly like, look, look at this, look at what I did, you know, and they're, or they're chatting the whole time. So you can, say, you know, I'm going to look at what you made as soon as we're done, and then I'll, you can show me. You know, so you can put some boundaries on all that. Even the tasks that we do, you know, if you can do those tasks together, you know, we have kids do do chores, but I don't really like sending them to go do chores because I think that invites some of the same problems that you're probably already having with whether the chores are done the way that you want and also whether they're done at all and just kind of different kids having different moods and attitudes about chores. So I recommend that you do chores together and that your child that struggles the most with chores is, is your is your buddy. And we can't force them to do it. So sometimes we have a couple different ways to deal with that. You can set a timer and say, hey, we're only going to do this for this many minutes. Let's see how much we can get done. Um, you can challenge them that way. Or, or if they're really, you know, don't want to do it, it's like, I know you don't want to do this and that's totally fine but you have to stay with me while I do it. And if they're not doing the chore, then you can also have them like, you're going to be with me, but we're not going to talk right now. Or if talking is what gets them engaged in doing it, then switch it up and say, you, know, you can tell me about that while we do this this chore or this task. Just including them in that and, and just being with them as they do it. I like to give them a lot of challenges and see if they can kind of rise to that occasion of like, you know, and being really clear too about how much they're going to do. Like, you know, we're going to do, we're going to do one cartload, 
you know, and then, and then we're going to be done with that. And then this is what we're going to do next. And, and so you can, you know, you, you can change it up so that they're still doing the task, but they're looking forward to something else. We all, we all get things done because there's something else that we wanted out of it usually. So we kind of have to build that in too, which also at the same time works on, you know, controlling and stopping kind of impulsive behavior and delay and creating that ability to delay. So sometimes that delay is only a first and then like first we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. It's not, you know, a whole list of things. And then we're going to go do this thing. You got to work with your kids where they're at. And sometimes at first it's just baby steps. So it's a first and then, and especially your kids that are really resistant, they don't want to do um, the task or the game or whatever it is. So it's, it's letting them know like, well, First, we're, you know, like if you're going to play two games and they don't like the first game, first we're going to play this game, then we're going to play the next game. And all of that, you you being involved in it, you having that that structure um, can really, really help to, to build those connections. One of the things that can cause a lot of strife and difficulties in building those connections is while you're doing those tasks, if you are micromanaging it or you're kind of overseeing it in a way that they don't have that ability to, you know, I, I, I care less about the task and how it's done than that, what you're creating in that time. I, I really have seen a lot of kids get better at doing the things as we kind of challenge them, but you got to build that relationship piece of it first. So don't trade the, the task or the thing that you wanted to get done or who won the game or who played the game, you know, exactly right. Don't, don't nitpick on on things, try to be create the the boundaries kind of around it, you know, so that they know what to expect and how long it's going to take and all of those things and um, build around it. They're staying connected and the not starting to feel like, oh, I didn't do it right or I'm, you know, they're struggling more and more as the further that you go. The other thing that um, that kind of happens too is sometimes we start off with one thing, like we're going to go, like put you know, laundry away or something. And then um, on the way, you know, it's like, oh, you know, get this or do that or, you know, or or you notice that something else isn't done. The more you can stay focused on, you know, the 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 one thing that you wanted, the the better it is. Even if later you have to go back and be like, hey, when we were when we were in your room, I saw that, you know, you still had all your dirty dirty clothes on the floor. And so you might need to you know, go, go back and do that later. But if you try to do too many things at a, in a row, they, it kind of ruins some of that connection and that, and in, in the tasks that you're doing, because you're kind of always changing it. Thanks for listening to the Parenting Bridge podcast. For more about parenting and how to get started building a bridge to better behaviors, go to the show notes and click on the link to Healthy Foundations. If you would like to leave a comment or have questions for Dr. Michelle, there's a link in the show notes to do so. Thank you.